See, Woj is here. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed your holiday before you came into work with us tonight. I did, Mike. Good for you. All right, uh, Woj, you know, as we sit and watch the Spurs sort of sort of play their cards here with Kawhi Leonard, you get all these narratives out here, what they're asking for, what teams are offering, blah, 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 blah. Cut through the chase for me. As it stands right now with Kawhi Leonard and the Spurs, where are we? The, the Spurs are in no rush to do a deal. Well, they're in no rush to do a bad deal. There we go. Okay. You know, they, would like to, they would like to end this. They want to get if, past it. Yeah, they do if they can't repair this relationship. And the way that they'll do a deal right now is if they get... No one ever gets everything they want. That's pretty rare. I mean, you, you look back, Carmelo, Carmelo Anthony traded with New York back in 2010-11. Mm -hmm. You know, that was a gigantic haul. Those days are over. So the Spurs right now talks with Boston, the Lakers, Philadelphia, a lot of other teams have inquired. There's a cautiousness to the teams. One, because the teams outside L.A. don't know that they can re-sign him. Right. They're also concerned about the injury and the medical um, where he is. And the Lakers feel like, we aren't going to, right now, their stand has been we're not going to gut our roster of young players and assets for a player we think we can get in free agency next summer who says he wants to come play here. Let me ask you about another name because you go back about 16, 18 months ago, there was talk that Isaiah Thomas could be in line for a max contract from the Celtics. Of course, he had the injury in the playoffs, went to Cleveland, now to the Lakers, and now it's like, where is Isaiah Thomas? What is the talk about him and where he's going to be next year? Well, it's a far different reality now yeah. for Isaiah Thomas than... He had in Boston before the Kyrie Irving trade. And, you know, the injury, you know, like the Marcus Cousins, the injury changes the market for Absolutely. him. Absolutely. There's tremendous interest in Isaiah, largely as a backup point guard for most teams right now. Um, teams that I've talked to who have really evaluated his medical, you know, he had the procedure and he's been working his way back. And right. They like what they see. They're encouraged sure. at a player who they think can be on the court. And, is it, is it going to be the Isaiah of Boston, 50-point games in the playoffs? I'm not sure anybody believes that anymore. But he doesn't have to be that to be a really productive player and a player that's garnering a lot of interest. I think you'll see um, talks with him start to heat up in the next few days of, as we've gotten through that first wave of players. There's not a lot of salary cap space left. Sure. It's almost assert, assuredly going to be a one-year deal. But he needs, like Cousins in some ways, a one-year deal to show he's healthy again. Right. And, and to get back out on the market next year. But I, there is great interest in him, and, and there is encouragement from teams um, that, that, he could, that he will be healthy. Wow. In line for maybe a max contract, and now be happy to get a one-year deal on a good team coming up this season. Woj, appreciate the time. At bottom, the balance of power really shifting out west. Several big-name players making a splash early on in NBA free agency, although uh, he initially declined his player option with the Thunder. Paul George agreeing to a four-year, $137 million max with Oklahoma City. In his first season with the Thunder, George averaged career highs in three-point field goals and steals. And then there is Chris Paul, also staying put, agreeing to a four-year, $160 million max contract with the Rockets, the sixth largest contract in terms of total value in NBA history. Paul has missed 46 games over the last two seasons due to injury. He'll be 36 years old in the last year of his contract. The LeBron era in Cleveland is over as the King, agreeing to a four-year, $153 million contract to join the Lakers on Sunday. LeBron will look to bring Los Angeles back to glory after a franchise record five straight seasons missing the playoffs. And just last night, DeMarcus Cousins recovering from a torn left Achilles, agreeing to a one-year, $5.3 million deal with the Warriors. Next season, Golden State will be the sixth team in NBA history to have five All-Stars from the previous season. Uh, uh, I'm a warrior. That's when he found out. Stephen A. Smith joining us now. Hey, Stephen A., you knew what was coming after the news broke last night of DeMarcus Cousins signing with the Warriors. What's your reaction to those who say, man, the Warriors are ruining the NBA? Well, I think people need to grow up, and I think people need to just stop all of this nonsense. It really gets on my damn nerves, to be quite honest with you. Uh, listen, Boogie Cousins is not going to be available probably until April or May. He's going to have to work off the rust, and then even then, he's going to be in a Warriors lineup, and he's going to be the fourth option at best. And so when we understand that, we recognize the potency of the, Vol the Golden State Warriors, but they were going to be potent with or without them. I'm not trying to say that he doesn't help them, but this... Excuse me, this is a guy that averaged 25, 13, and 5 last season, okay? As the number one or number one A option. He's going to be a fourth option in Golden State. You got to take those things into consideration. And more importantly, you got to be about embracing the challenges. 
understanding that the Warriors is going to be incumbent upon them to figure out what role he can play and how he can play it in their system to such a degree that he doesn't grow frustrated or turned off by what's transpiring. You could say a lot of things when nobody's picked up the phone to call you and you're looking for a contract. But once you have that contract and you're in tow and you're anxious to get out there because you're a free agent, you're going to be a free agent next summer. And you're anxious to remind everybody of the greatness that you put on display for the first nine years of your career if you're inhibited from doing so because three other individuals on the squad are bigger options than you, who knows what kind of negative impact that could have. So people need to stop whining and crying and go out there hell-bent on competing because true champions are ones who want to knock off champions so they can validate their own greatness as opposed to whining about the level of competition that they got to go up against. Well, all right then. Uh, let's go back down south to Los Angeles for a second. We've heard that LeBron is willing to be patient with the Lakers front office, but James is 33, turning 34 in December. Winning soon would be preferred, I'm sure. How satisfied are you with the Lakers roster as presently constructed? Not very satisfied. I'm happy that they still held on to Kyle Kuzma rather than give in to the San Antonio's demands, which I have heard were Kuzma, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, and about three first-round picks. Certainly, L.A. would have been foolish to do that, assuming those things are true. But in the end, what it comes down to is that Rondo can ball. He elevates his level of play in the postseason, but he's no shooter. Lance Stevenson is an enigmatic individual who shows up in big moments from time to time, but I'm not dependent on him either. Don't get me started with JaVale McGee. The only thing I'm looking forward to seeing when it comes to him is Shaq in the fool. So the bottom line is when you look at it from that perspective, there's some huge question marks. The Lakers are on the phone presently trying to get a shooter. They were hoping to get their hands on J.J. Redick. That did not work out because he re-signed with Philadelphia. Who knows who they're going to get in tow as a shooter. The pressure's not on LeBron to win this year because no matter who you had, you were not going to be the favorite over Golden State. But they do recognize the priority of getting Kawhi Leonard, especially since you're not going to get Paul George. They're still working on that. Who knows what's going to happen within the next 24 hours or so as it pertains to that. But they definitely need more than they have right now. So I'm not satisfied. Stephen A. Smith, <laughs> breaking it down. My man, appreciate you. No doubt. <laughs> Ennis Cantor is more upset than Stephen A. on the Warriors' crybabies on what's going on. Check this out on Twitter, saying that the commish agreed to a mid-level extension with Golden State. He also said he wouldn't be surprised if the Warriors signed Thanos and John Wick to their bench for one year. But I don't think Keanu Reeves is shooting is good enough to join this particular Warriors team. Let's be honest, the collective group of basketball fans on social media, I know you guys call yourselves NBA Twitter. Don't be fooled. This is NBA Twitter. Adrian is here. Let's start with everything that's happened in free agency, starting with the Australian Dante Exum. Yeah, I'm just reporting now. Dante Exum has agreed to a three-year, $33 million extension with Utah. He's still only 22 years old. He was a fifth overall pick in 2014, fought through injuries early in his Jazz career, but tremendous potential. That organization really still believes in his future. Tyreek Evans, a one-year, $12 million deal. Sources tell me mm. to go to the Pacers, the flew Pacers. in there today. Uh, he'll join Doug McDermott in their free agent class. Um, Michael Carter-Williams, a one-year deal to go to the Houston Rockets, play off their bench behind Chris Paul and James Harden. And the Nuggets have traded uh, Wilson Chandler and his $12.8 million deal, a second-round pick to Philadelphia into their cap space. Uh, Denver looking to get out of the luxury tax, and now they're going to re-sign Will Barton. And now Wilson Chandler goes to the Sixers. You know, good two-way player. He can help that team. Or they can flip him in a trade. And they've been talking with the Spurs, although that has not gotten a lot of traction, sources tell me, because they have not shown a willingness to put any of their three top players in the deal. Now, you know Embiid and Ben Simmons aren't going to be in the deal. But Markel Fultz has not been in. And when you've got a top three or four player in the world and the team won't put any of its top three guys in, you could do the math. Um, that's not a deal that, that's working. And that top three player in the world, of course, we know is Cole Highlander went healthy, the offensive and defensive prowess he brings. So what is the latest on him right now? Well, you know, teams around the league, the, the Spurs aren't getting, this is not a bidding war going on. You know, there's concerns about Kawhi Leonard. They, teams don't know the medical, um, the quad injury. They don't know how he's going to return from it. And 
they know that he wants to play in Los Angeles. And so there's lots of reasons for you to be cautious with how much you're going to offer. Boston has talked to him. Philadelphia has talked. The Clippers have tried. Denver's checked in. Um, the Lakers have been, so far, uh, pretty staunch in keeping some of their young players out of con uh, uh, trade talks. Yeah. So right now, the Spurs are willing to do a deal if the right one comes up. They're also willing to play it out with Kawhi Leonard. They can still offer him that $219 million super max, mm -hmm. uh, but the relationship between he and the team, that's remained uh, extremely poor. It's unchanged. There's been no coming together since that brief meeting between Popovich and Kawhi in L.A. or in Southern California a few weeks ago. And we should mention Southern California. It's not just the lore of the Lakers. Kawhi Leonard went to King High School in Riverside. He's a SoCal kid, so if this happens, it could be a bit of a homecoming, and of course we know Woj will stay on top of everything. You know what happened right after we got off the air last night with Boogie Cousins. Adrian, thank you very much. The notable free agents remaining that he will be keeping an eye on. Clint Capella and Marcus Smart are obviously fixtures on their team. Jabari Parker was the second overall pick in his NBA draft. All these guys, though, are restricted. Obviously a huge qualifier when we're talking about unrestricted free agents like we have the last 24 to 48 hours. <laughs> Very few people saw it coming. DeMarcus Cousins agreeing to a one-year, $5.3 million deal with the Warriors and the undefeated Smart J. Spears reporting Cousins didn't have a single free agent offer. The defending champs adding a fifth all-star to an already historic, dynastic roster. Reaction from around the league was swift and at times perplexed. Let's start with Michael Wilbon. Talk about an upgrade. What's the one dimension, the one element that the Warriors have not really had during this entire run. A dynamic big man. A big man who, you know, brings more than just a specific element. You know, they would plug and play. We're going to bring in a guy who's a better passer now, bring in a better defender, bring in somebody who can, you know, play some pick and roll. No, 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 no. If Boogie Cousins can come back and be mostly himself, he brings something in that position that the Warriors have not had and they must be chuckling to themselves now. Have you ever seen anything like this? To be honest, besides in the video game, no, not really. DeMarcus Cousins now apparently a Golden State Warrior. Looking for a reaction now. Oh. Are you, are you being... I'm absolutely serious. Uh, well, it's the Western Conference, you know. We're all for a challenge. That's why we're in the West. Um, you know, but, you know, it's, we're focused on us, and we're just going to keep playing games. we got a game tomorrow, so that's all we're focused on, one game at a time. Thank you very much. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Level. I think you're going to make more than this. Boogie's on the The greatest I reaction of all time. I love that reaction. All right, so how good is this Warriors team now? Vegas, the books have reacted thusly. They're now two to three for <laughs> NBA title odds. Vegas thinks a few teams, and I mean very few, have a shot because 21 of the 30 NBA teams have 100 to 1 odds or worse to win the title. The Dubs, the favorite, to now 3P. One of our favorites, NBA analyst Brian Winhurst, back with us on Sports Center. Brian, how are players, now we saw Jaron Jackson Jr., other players around the league reacting to this move? A lot of players who apparently have never had an Achilles injury are very excited. Uh, the guys who've had Achilles injuries know that this is going to be a really tough year for, for DeMarcus. Um, obviously, this was a shock value because nobody saw this coming. Um, in my mind, Randy, I saw this. I was like, hey, man, this is cool. This is cool for DeMarcus because he's going to have a rough year this year. This is cool for the Warriors because it's a really nice um, risk-reward play for them. If he comes back and helps, it's going to be great. If he doesn't come back and isn't really able to contribute, no big deal. They're still a championship team. But, man, there was like an apoplectic reaction, like the league has been destroyed. <laughs> um, I was completely blown away by the reaction to this, as if DeMarcus is going to show up on night one and go for 40 and 15. I mean, the, the Warriors are going to still have to sign another center because they're going to have to start somebody at that position, potentially for 60-plus games. Now, Again, I granted, I believe that we could be sitting here in March and this could be like a genius move and Boogie could be really contributing. And it makes a bunch of sense for them. It didn't make sense for a lot of teams because of his injury. So I wish the best for Boogie. I wish the best for the Warriors. 
But everybody just take a breath and calm down. They did not sign Will Chamberlain in his prime here. <laughs> no, they didn't. And they didn't even sign a healthy Will Chamberlain later in his career either. So <laughs> let's move now from the champs to the also rans, the Thunder. Well over the salary cap. A lot of money well committed. Over. A lot of money committed to Carmelo Anthony, and he's one of the bigger reasons why they're so far over the cap. How might that, the, that impact, how might that change his future in OKC? Yeah, where Carmelo Anthony is opening night could have a lot bigger impact on this season than where Boogie is. But uh, So there's two important things with Carmelo and the Thunder. Number one is whether Melo is willing to change his role to come back from the starting lineup and be a scorer off the bench for this team, which is probably where they need him to be. If the answer to that question is yes, I think he's got a good future there. If the answer is no, they may have to evaluate their position. The second thing, Randy, is... How do Paul George and Russell Westbrook feel? Do they want Carmelo on this team? They were a big three last year. They really like him. It was, a, it was a big moment when they traded for him. They've now both re-signed in the wake of Carmelo re-signing. If they want him on the team, I think he'll be there. But if they're indifferent, then I think there's a chance that Carmelo could eventually be on the market before the end of August when this decision would happen. We'll have to see how that plays out over the next two months. But I'm going to tell you, the Thunder keeping him on this team versus waiving him and stretching his contract makes tens of millions of dollars in salary cap and luxury tax difference. It is not something people are like, oh, we'll keep Mello, everything's cool. This is a major decision. Yeah, they are repeat offenders. So the luxury tax number combined with the roster number puts it close to $300 million for a team that did not make it out of the first round. Not just round. close, Randy. It's over $300 million There right you go. Now. Brian Windhorse. we appreciate the insight, buddy. Thank you. Pelicans for Rondo, and according to Woj, he's going to sign a one-year, $9 million deal. The Lakers also renounced Julius Randle. Sounds so formal. We renounce you. Which created more cap flexibility. He immediately became a free agent, was immediately snagged by the Pelicans. But yeah, Rondo's a Laker. LeBron James has been so good over the years. You just feel like he can take any team to the finals. I mean, we look at the team he took to the finals last year. But LeBron needs certain pieces around him that's going to fit. You need shooting around him, around him. You need ball spacing, guys who can play hard and defend. Out of all these players, I like the addition of Rondo because he gives them a high IQ. They're going to play hard. You know, they're, they're going to be in the grid of things. You know, these are guys like Rondo, Lance Stephen, who, who's made deep playoff runs they've been to the finals and, and so those are veterans that under the leadership uh, of lebron and magic johnson and luke walton can help the young guys move along lebron wanted to build a team to take on the warriors and what he's got is sort of like the anti-warriors it's like three ball struggles built rondo is a sub 31 percent three-point shooter for his career he's never made more than a three per game in any season then there's lance stevenson shot 28.9 percent from three last season third worst among all players who took at least 200 attempts and then lonzo ball i mean his shooting struggles are well documented last season only russell westbrook made fewer percentage of threes than lonzo did in as many attempts so if the lakers have shooting woes next season it's not exactly going to be a new thing last season they ranked as one of the worst teams in a variety of shooting categories including catch and shoot mid-range three-pointers and free throws the silver lining to all of this is of course lebron last year seven of lebron's Cavs teammates were able to improve their shooting off of his passes hello brian windhorst this uh, Rondo deal is sort of interesting to me. It's like red flags, flares, whatever you got, throw it up. I sort of feel like it's asking for the drama. What do you think? Well, in and of itself, bringing on Rondo actually kind of makes some sense. He's a highly intelligent player, very competitive, valuable in the postseason. I kind of get it. I'm down for it. I'm even okay with the $9 million. That's an average player salary in the NBA now. The issue is with what else they have on the team, specifically Lonzo Ball, and this is where I'm worried about the drama, Nicole, because Lonzo Ball is their point guard of the future in their franchise point guard and a guy that you'd like to develop playing alongside LeBron James. Not only that, I kind of like the fit with Lonzo because he throws the ball up court. He'll start fast breaks that LeBron can finish. By doing this, you raise the potential for there to be friction between Rondo, who I know is going to want to play, and Lonzo, who you want to develop. So... The question to me is, did the Lakers do this because they have a landing spot where they can trade Lonzo Ball, or did the Lakers do this from Magic's perspective to create healthy competition? Because considering the personality that Lonzo has and the personality that Rondo has, I don't think this is going to be the greatest fit in the world. So definitely something to watch. It's only July 3rd. 
We don't know the entire Lakers depth chart yet, so I'm going to hold back a little bit. But let's just say I was pretty surprised to see this move go, go down. Yeah, I feel like something's cooking. I feel like they're working on something. Don't go too far. We're going to bring Brian back in a few minutes to talk about DeMarcus Cousins, who's going to that poor Warriors roster, and Kevin Love's future in Cleveland. What might that be? So stand by.